the mangrove forests in our country. We would like to continue with the fourth session. Uh, during the meantime, if you want to go to the restroom or pick up coffee or tea, you can certainly do it during this time. So the fourth um, session, we will be discussing more on the um, cooperation and concrete success, real case studies all over from all over Thailand. We have uh, honored by having many participants who have helped develop the mangroves for a long time. And they have seen uh, sustainable changes in the target community. So I would like to present um, this um, platform to Mrs. Siriponsi Aram, Darren Thailand Mangrove Alliance, and Mr. Pet Mano Prawit, uh, who are going to be summarizing the parts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone for uh, staying here and also online. Siripon or Bibi, I would like to tell you a little bit about the Mangrove Alliance, the Thailand Mangrove Alliance, how it came about and the groups. I would like to uh, go back. I think everyone still remember the tsunami um, in 2011, because at that time, you know, the mangrove is extremely important, UNICEF. Um, and IUCN has set up a mangrove for the future project. They use the word mangrove, is considered a flagship species, but they also look at all the restoration of the ecosystem on all along the coastal area. So this is a new way of management in which we work with the MCR. Um, um, I was a consultant along with uh, many NGOs and agencies. We worked in several provinces that, that have been impacted by tsunami. We provide funding areas and groups for uh, restoration. The project has worked for 10 years, and it was completed. We had a, a platform for exchange with Dow, and Dow provided support to create a new um, project, which is Dow and Thailand Mangrove Alliances. So we were able to invite experts who uh, have experience with restoration of the ecosystem uh, to come and talk to us. In this uh, session, we will have Kun Kayai Thong Nun, who uh, is a great support. Uh, who will promote the coastal uh, uh, region six? Kun Kayai also is the head of the Rayong uh, Ranong uh, coastal province that is going to be proposed as a heritage world heritage area. I've worked with the person who, who uh, they are looking uh, had had a study uh, at Sunabang, which is the largest group. He had had experience to work with people for more than 20 years. There will also be two other um, practice. The Andaman Sea, we have Ms. Mani Wan San Lee, who is from the Safe Andaman Sea Network. She will come and tell us about challenges and opportunities in the Andaman Sea. They work in six areas of the coastal Andaman Sea. And we also have from the center um, of the community training, Kundravi Tawon from Rikov. Uh, he is very experienced in working with the community forests. They formerly worked with mangrove forests in Trad and work at the municipality level. And lastly, our newest um, partner is the mayor of Paknam Prasa or Kun Chairat Urtragun, who will come and explain change ideas on the resources. In the water, there is fish, and in the forest, there are crabs. Can I have Kun Chairat Urtragun to come and explain to us, please? Um, I 
have no chair to sit and also speak later than other. But thank you to the organizer who invite me because normally when they have a discussion in Bangkok, the local um, HC would not be aware of it. But but the work we do in the area is the same that we discuss in Bangkok, and uh, there's a number of things that can go together at the same time. I we walked about the um, ecosystem and the mangrove forest for a long time before we actually come down to the community. So the 20 years, we, I think we have left many footprints uh, behind and a few things that I could tell you about. What I would like to present uh, is the mangrove um, replanting forest is a friendship project between Thai and Japan. And then I will finish um, the coastal with the coastal Ranong area. I would like to give the information about Ranong. We have 1.9, um, uh, 109,000 uh, populations and about 3,000 um, square kilometers. We have the 137 um, coastal uh, area of uh, kilometers and 62 islands, and we have the 53 um, percentage of the forest area, and we have healthy uh, mangrove forest about 171,000. Right. Before we continue, I would like to show you the history of the land use of the mangrove forest users since the since the olden day, 100 years ago, until the year. 2022 is starting from the mining. The mangrove forest has been used. The Siamese tin syndicate has received the concessions, and then the boat for the mining would go through the mangrove forest and it disappear. The mangrove forest disappear, and then later on there's the concessions for the charcoal, and then in the year to 1982 we got the research center for the mangrove forest, and then in the year 2000 there's a shrimp farm, and it leave the all those abandoned, degraded mangrove forests and the the way they conducting aquacultures are not across, are not appropriate and they leave those abandoned shrimp pond that used to be mangrove forest is the age for utilizations. And the year nineteen ninety seven UNESCO announced that the mangrove area in Renan is a conserved area for the biodiversities of the world. And then the, the end of the concessions of the uh, shrimp farming, the restart restorations. Our work starts in the year 2000 until nowadays. And the Renong mangrove forest has been brought as a world heritage again. So during the way, during the journey, there's a lot of story going on about land usage and about the restorations effort. The one that we'll be talking about would be from the year 2002 to 2022, which is a restoration period. Previously, the Department of Forestry also attempt to that, but they got about 50 rai or 100 rai per year. It's not fast enough. So after restoring, it's been encroached again. So in the year 2002, there's a discussion about climate change, global warming. At that time, it's about global warming only, not climate change. So we combined together about the necessity to restore the mangrove forest, uh, to raise awareness of the people, to really pay attention, to really do reforestation, to mitigate the, climate, the global warming. So the design turned into the uh, run-on uh, centers together with the OISCA foundations who work on environment they raise awareness for the children, they do reforestations and OISCA. The mother, com mother organization is in Japan and connected also with a volunteer, volunteer organization in Japan. And we believe that to leave the forest with just one stakeholder is not good enough as leave it with the community. So we want those uh, community to be the one who grow the forest as well. So the way to 
regenerate forests, starting from the survey of the area and the community coming together to have the volunteers to and the, also we have the Japanese visitors and we educate them about environment, about the community, about mangrove forest. We do planting together. We get the volunteers to live, to work and stay with the communities. And afterward, we have the homestay and uh, group discussions. So from the degrade forest becoming healthy forest, we want to focus in on the quality. And since the year 2002 until now, we organized already the 90s or more than 100 activities for this in Ranong. We we plant about 9,000 right in all the plots, and all the plots have a healthy, strong tree. We have organizations who are coming together, there's a lot of them. There's about 22 Tokyo Marine, IBM, we have Dunlop Japan, we have this volunteer Love Greens group. And one of the interesting methods we use is the group, uh, the Love Green group. Love Greens is a volunteer who come together uh, to do fundraising. They do fundraising with this method. Kun Nobohiko Matsunaka is the best baller in the hawk team in the Fukuoka. Is in the league that is a top, one of the top. And Matsunaka is also in the national team. And they made agreement that if um, Matsunaka Sang can hit one home run, we'd, we would like to get rest about a budget for 1,000 um, rice of fora. And that year, Matsunaka is really top form. He hit 40 home run throughout the league season. So we grow, we plant 40,000 rice of fora in the Nong area. This is interesting method. I have an idea also to talk to Kun Harlan, Kun Messi, and Kun Ronaldo as well. So maybe have to coordinate through the other partners. So Matsunaka san come every year as well to look at the trees that is contribute from his home run. He already support 300 right in Ranong. So this is a very interesting um, strategies and gimmick. So in conclusion, the forests that we grow in Ranong, other forests that already been degraded by the concessions that is number one that's very hard to grow the trees there because it has weeds and that because the forests are, we have high density of the trees but a concession cut the trees out and then there would be the the wipe the trailing uh, leases and all those weeds going on so that's why we need to do the land clearing and then fill uh, and then add in the tree plant them at that first stage we do this thing and every area we try the slow repairment we try to add in the trees fulfilling in the gap until it's complete and next the second one is in the mining area it's mostly in Ngao district so we restore that area as well and the third one before the year 2017 that was the shrimp farm then we get the land back and restore it and the last one is a special area. The, if you ask which one is the easiest one, and the easiest one is a shrimp farm because that you just drain the water and then you just plant it and the tree is thriving. The second easiest option would be for the, the one through the degraded area concessions. The hardest one is a special zone or when they encroachment into the mangrove forest, they put the soil from other area on top of it. So we do the experiment whether it's worth it to invest about 30,000 baht per ride and get the area back into the mangrove forest. Would it survive? So we do this for them, um, like the, the repair it back to the previous status. Before the top left, it used to be the mangrove forest and it been encroached so we turn it back and then plant it and then it quite good result but it high investment cost so the lesson learned and the experience we gain we could summarize it in such a way that to do the mangrove restoration it of course need investment 
the mangrove forest. It's also in trend of the society and also that strong de determination of agents of the other agency. Well, to just be in a trend, it's a selfie when you grow the mangrove forest. It's ranking higher than other tourist activities. And the budget, uh, if you're in the area, there's no limit. But it, it's the government sectors that have a lot of investment for the mangrove forest. The roles of the officers. You need to be act as a bridge between the world and the communities. You see that the needs for the mangrove for re restoration is really high. The community wants to grow, but there are never opportunity to meet up. So the officer need to act as a bridge. So I think in the policy level, it's quite good now because there's a management both by the government sectors and the private sectors. They're connecting to go down on the ground to meet the communities and change all the activities of the mangrove restoration into a quality CSR. The officers also need to help with this. It cannot be a wasted effort. It has to be on the scientific base and give the um, accurate information. We, like the in the Department of Forestry, when people want to plant the trees, we feel that, yeah, we feel kind of like we would like to facilitate them. But in the case that we know it won't survive, we need to inform those people. You can't be too considerative of, or too mindful of those CSR projects. You need to propose a solution and options for that. And when you give the options, they would always go choose a good alternative. There used to be a people who are coming in to contact and to contact us, and we said, yes, you grow in a large area and they all die, or you just grow one right and survive. Where do you have pride? And so they choose something that is really beneficial. I believe everyone has strong intentions and a good will to grow the forest. And most importantly, you have to change the forestation into the job creation for the communities. This is also in alignment with the speaker from the Ma Fa Luong Foundation project as well. So if people are hungry, the forest disappear. If the people survive and live well, the forest would also be in a good um, state um, condition as well. The real determination for the, for the forestation is more important than technique. It doesn't mean that technique is not important, but on the ground, there's some area that's very difficult to grow, but even people who want to beat it, to overcome the challenge, to really create a forest there, it's important. So in summary, you have to have determination first. You have to have a fighting spirit first. And before, before the last point, uh, of mangrove restorations is the best way and a sustainable way. So there's a lot of demand and a lot of need to go to the community to do this mangrove restorations. There's a lot of budgeting that would go down onto the ground. So the community needs to be engaging in this project as well. Personally, whoever can access the tree planting, can plant the forest, they reach happiness. That is my belief. In the children's as well does have good developments, good progress. The children, when we have the forest project, they would continue planning and they look happy while doing so. In the community as well, they work happily with joy. But I would like to say that the government sectors who do, do doing the forestation, they just plant two trees and they leave, just like this for 20 years already. And last but not least, the forestation is like a bridge to bring people together, to become good friends, to have, be a good companions. So to plant trees, you get more than forest. This is the truth. So Renong, Renong project are now all healthy, complete. There's no, the very limited areas that is still love that we need to work on. But so we think about how do we get the people to really benefit from this project? 
we think uh, uh, on the second phase project, which is to develop the uh, coastal community to be resilient to climate change. What I would like to say is that the content of this project is the maintenance of mangrove forests and community development. But what we need to do in this is that we need to do it in this manner to be able to assess grant because it would be um, in alignment with the, the trends this day. Now, I would like to review my face, if you don't mind. I've been speaking with Mas on for too long. We continue with our effort because in all the area of Renong, we already plant the forest. One of the problem we encounter later is that there's a lot of people who plant the forest, plant the tree, but there's not enough area to plant anymore. We have to allocate like 10 rai for this group, this group five rai. This, it's come to this point in Renong. So we don't know whether we should be happy or sad because the area is fully packed now. We only have a, a small spot for planting. So let's continue. So the next project that we have in the pipeline is to coastal community development to be uh, able to be resilient with climate change. The rationale is, as said, because eventually the community is the vulnerable group. Director Darun said that Thailand ranked number nine for the country that would be impacted the most in the world. And that number nine, which area have the highest risk? Of course, the coastal community. So we need to help them. We need to assist them. For the National Master Plan for Climate Change on NAP, we have uh, three main measures. One is mitigations. The community doesn't really have much impact there, but the main one for the coastal community is adaptations to the chain because the impact are already there at Lao Island. Lao Islands are famous about the um, the krill uh, pest. The krill pest, but one household would catch about three to four tons. So it's a revenue generation. But the whole village now, they only catch krill for two tons only. So they per year. So they really need to adapt. The home as well need to be lifted up before it's next to the beach. And also it needs to be lifted on steel and removed from the beach area. So the threat is imminent. So when we want to work, I believe that the easiest way is going back to the king message and also sufficient economy. It has to be reasonable and you need to have the immunities. For example, export from inside, uh, solved uh, from the small spot, use a nature-based solutions and participation. So you need to use knowledge first, starting from small and scale it up. Use the area base and work in a, in a participatory approach. And we have the experience from the Thai Japanese uh, forestation project. We see that the community is a leader. It really make an impact because when we want to work on CSR, we often put the focus on those who come to plant it more than the community. It's just like a blessing in disguise from outsider, but you need to reprioritize it. Actually, the community has to be the leaders. The roles need to be allocated accordingly. So those who come into the community are assistant, those who would be the wing, wind beneath the wings, and we all get the benefit together. So if the village get the benefit, the sub-district also get benefit, the city, the country, and the world in the sequence. So I think we, this is very important, starting from the communities, so for the CSR. And the idea for the adaptation to climate change in the community level, we see the impact of the climate change or erratic climate scenario. It make the community being adversely impact. So the principle is that they need to be aware and to have the knowledge to be able to manage the impact and also to have sustainable job 
a livelihood. So the activity under the projects, we have a number of activity in the area about PR, um, raising awareness, uh, career development, job creation. The area that's in the four เกาะคนทีเกาะเหลาเกาะสินไหยท่าฉางท่าต้นสนแอเรีย Lao Island is a small one. At the Renong Estuary, it's about just three minutes boat ride. And the, uh, the King Rama V already visited in the olden day. Lao Island just have 12 rai for the communities. The whole area is 1,700 rai. Sin Hai Island is about 300 households, 1,700 people. That is a target area, target interventions. I would go quickly. And the desired change after the project, that the project is three years. In the year 2022-2024, we set up a group, and each group have the regulations, and they would adhere to the regulations. And the crew pace has been elevated, both in the quality and pricing. It's not enough now for on sale. From the 20 baht per kilo is now uh, 200 baht per kilo, and they now produce the quality seedling for 20,000 seedling per year. And they are now confident in uh, being able to develop and relying on their own ability. Before they fell for the group activity, for fell in the project, this project established in them more confidence and to have the tourism activity as well. It's the same in Sin Mai and Ta Chang Ta Ton Son. This is from the Ta Chang Ta Ton Son. They create the products from the mangrove area and they sell really well. All the forests are now healthy. So what we need to continue is that to benefit from the forest, to generate the revenue from the forest, these are the soap, these are mangrove soap in the shape of the fish. And, and also they also generate the revenue from the black crab and they make the make the soap in the shape of black crab. And we have the mapping of the communities. And if I may use a bit of time, the experience of working at Sin Hai Island. What we encounter, this is just one example. I believe that in other communities about similar experiences. That's activity project with a budget to work in the area. There's so much both from the government, private, and NGO, but none of them talking together. They each do it in siloed. I'm not sure whether I could talk about the problem here on this forum. I can, right? Okay. Our main gap is that there's no preparations for the community. They just put the money for developmental purpose, but they don't teach about the management. So this is what we all encounter. We see failure and the, you know, the unsuccess outcome. It's just like you waste money, you throw money away. And the important thing is that it's changed the behavior of the people. Before the people are very honest, very have good integrities, but now they see just a short-term benefit, value money more than other things, and just waiting for the grant and assistance from outsider. And the um, government sectors also complain that very difficult to work with this community. I don't argue that, but yeah, this is what happened. And also lack of community corporations and and also the leaders are lacking confidence and they're scared of the group uh, management. And it's just like each of us would live in silo and just bear with whatever is going on. So what we are doing here is that we want to create a deep understanding to focus on the and to develop the capacity is lies with the people, not from the outside, to see the importance of the three pillars, economics, socials, and environment has to go together and set up more activity as a group team or teamwork. And also the activity has to focus on livelihood first. And then we act as a mentor for the community and then coordinate with other agency. That, these are all the limitations from the government sectors about budgeting system, manpower. Therefore, our project, the, the one that we want to build the capacity of the community at the coastal area, a blue economy, etc., when we translate it into the, 
the community. We ha have to focusing on the um, job creation, conservation, and also to management. That is all that we need. The proposal for development. I believe that the major gap is that the, the budget is limited. Well, no, sorry, the budget is a lot, but we need to really prepare the community so that I to believe that they could move forward and the, the um, private sector should fulfill in this gap as well and to reduce the gap between the policy and implementations. What we talk together with the community here in this room and with the community, there's still such a wide gap between. We need a bridge. If you have beautiful cat, but it can't catch a mice, it doesn't work, you know. You need to be able to catch the mice as well. This project has been ongoing for two years. We cannot say for sure that it is a success, but we encounter a, a number of signs for a good directions. So this is just the experience I would like to share. My time is up. I'm sorry I'm taking over the time. And thank you so much for inviting me today and last but not least if you're interested in blue carbon and if you don't get to see the mangrove forest in Ranong, you're not there yet we want to welcome you so please come and visit us we are really ready to welcome you thank you thank you very much um Kayai. this is experience from real application um, Kung Kiai has mentioned several success factors, the selection of the site, appropriate selection, participation of the community. And another point that everyone who's working on site should know is the continuity with um, persistence. I think the second project is a good um, point. Uh, how come there is growth until there is no more room to m more replanting. It means that it is not the ending. There are various obstacles in the conservation, expanding, or joining together as a group. I think the experience that Kun Kayai has shared with us is extremely important for looking at blue carbon and how we should emphasize the importance of the community, public participation from the beginning, as well as uh, mentorship um, in providing knowledge and continued support. So these are uh, valuable experience. And I think like when talking about blue carbon, Renong is actually very rich uh, in terms of seagrass. Uh, and it can be a protected area. Thank you very much. Next, may I invite the mayor of Park Nam Prasa, Mr. Chairat Eudragoon from Rayong. The relationship between the coastal ecosystem and food security. Right, first of all, I have to say hello to everyone and all the participants who are here. I am Chairat Eutagun, the mayor of Paknam Prasad, sub-district Rayong. Uh, I think Dao has asked me to talk about six points. I've prepared quite a lot, but I have to, uh, if I do not cover everything, I have to say sorry. I'm from the outside of Bangkok, so I will try my best. The stories of the richness of the resources of the mangrove uh, ecosystem, I have to say that formerly when I was quite young, you know, in searching, you know, uh, for food in the water around my house, this is so easy, you know, when I come back, from school, I just jump in the water near my house, and there are crabs everywhere. They will, they will walk on both sides, left and right. You just take a net to the left, and then you stomp on the right. They will run into the net. Ah, they will run 
is so rich. At present, around uh, 2000, um, uh, around 2000, 1987, there was encroachment of the mangrove uh, to create shrimp farms, um, fish and crab. So a lot of the mangrove forests were destroyed. I was a mayor in uh, 2003. I went to study the Kungarbain project of King Rama the Ninth. Kun Ek sitting here, he was an expert and he went with me. So we saw the richness of the Kungarbain area. It's such, it's a very well managed area. So I thought we should apply the project of King Rama the Ninth to uh, our area in Perse. I looked at the various resources. They applied it very well, not like us. You know, we were just, uh, they grow the mangrove, some survived, some didn't, but they had a system. So we apply that. We actually did not uh, as receive cooperation from the people in the area. They said, you grow it, and it all died. So um, we looked at the, and Kun Ekachai Nekpaniang has ideas and knowledge since he was very young, so we tried. At present, the forest has become really, really rich. In the last 10 years, uh, the Dow company has worked with us to grow has worked with every part, uh, whether it is the areas and with the students in the schools. We worked uh, in, uh, they work in Paknam Prasa and they come and do study visit. Why, what happened? Because 100% of the trees that we planted um, mostly survived. Only about 10% was lost because we went in to look after them. I look after it, Kun Ekachai look after it, and all of the various members of the council also look after it. This formally, they said, no, don't grow it. It died because in the, but in the last three years, I grew about 10 rye. The tourist comes in. The trees are about the, uh, about the waist high. It's so beautiful. And they said, oh, it's so really nice. And they came and visit. They came on tours. They joined us the various tours and trips. And thank you, Dow Company, who has worked with us for 10 years now. They were able to uh, provide a photo competition of this beautiful uh, prizes. And so new people, the young people, they took pictures, pupils, students, and tourists come in, that provides uh, Brasa with a lot of income. At present, they don't complain anymore about uh, growing the, the mangrove, and they don't cut any mangroves because everyone looks after it well. They gain revenue from the shrimp, from the fish, from the crab, um, they were able to get food. And another point is that there were many tourists who came in to visit um, in the boats that go through the canal. Uh, and, the, and the housewives would s sit in the, uh, the three wheelers and go around. 
the area. So the public sector does not have to look after the forest because the community knows that they will get income from the tourists and they will uh, are able to gather the crabs um, in the area. I don't have much knowledge. I followed um, the speeches of the uh, Her Majesty the Queen of the of uh, King Rama the Ninth because she said that the king is the water and I'm going to be the forest. So I just followed what Her Majesty has mentioned when I was the mayor. Uh, and then I worked for His Majesty. Now we are able to grow 600 right, 400,000 trees are complete. We would like to thank Dao again for your uh, support and allow has uh, created a natural environment for uh, learning and for knowledge. So people would go to the Natural Heritage Center of Prasa, and Bak Nam Prasa has become very well known as a tourist area. Thank you very much again. We also know that you have large canals. We want everyone is working in agriculture, we are farmers. If the area is rich, all the various um, sea life would come in. Another point which I have never known before is the carbon. The tourists, when once they go there, they walk outside and inside. Once you start walking in the forest, it's cool and the uh, air is fresh and natural. So the tourist knows immediately that Prasa is um, a center for tourism. It has beautiful air. That's all. That's what I want to tell you. As mentioned earlier, in nineteen eighty seven, several encroachment was to build um, the shrimp farms. This has damaged the ecosystem and the areas. I am the mayor. I was the mayor, so so many community have joined together until uh, around 600 right or 400,000 trees were planted. There were many species of birds uh, that have migrated from Siberia especially these birds are linked together on the 11th year oh, I'm sorry on the 11th month the water would rise and the crab would come up and the birds would fly in and eat the crabs so if we take the boat in, they would scatter. It's really beautiful. So finally, the municipality has worked so that um, the resources have become revived. We grew and planted all the mangroves and the people in the area have uh, received benefits And then they would, uh, you know, use the net, uh, get the, uh, they would take the tourists to go around to look at the ecosystem. And uh, after the women 
would sell the fish. They would take the uh, tourists on these three tricycles to look at the wheel points. So we built, uh, we instill awareness on all those, uh, everyone as well, for the conservation and the re restoration of these forests. I had mentioned that I do not know anything, uh, but we have to be good and we have to grow forests. We want Prasad to be full of trees, to be without pollution, and it is to be a sustainable tourist city. I really would like to thank the mayor sincerely and also beautiful for pictures that you showed. Really, really like a real pro for TED Talk. It's really illustrate that the roles of the leaders in the communities um, and also the determinations to work. And now we're talking about the restorations at also as a scaling up. Just as the mayor mentions about food, about livelihood, about the communities are mostly features. So it's now being restoring and even more abundance than before. So there's an opportunity to benefit also from tourism. The example of the last bird is not more than the truth because it's the area that's important for the biodiversity conservation. It's, um, we see this uh, bird as a almost extinct one. It's not, and Thailand is the habitat for the 20% of the populations. It's the remaining number in the whole world is about 1,100 only. So if we restore it in the correct way, we could scale it up in the abundancy. It's not just plant the trees and that's it, but we have to do manage it in the co continuous manner. I would like to pass the floor to the next area, Kun Mani Wan San Li, from the Andaman. Um, safe Andaman Sea Network. We talk about the threat to the ecosystem and the living um, organisms in the Andaman Sea. So threat in the sea, challenges and opportunity for, of resources management in the area. Good afternoon to the participants today. And I would like to thank the organizer as well to give the opportunities for me to talk about the experience and working on the ground. Previously, I listened to uh, the other uh, governments uh, and the mayors and I feel very encouraged that there's a government sector that's really access the community and want to work together on developmental issues with the communities. And I am one who work in the coastal development projects since the tsunami disasters that the Andaman Foundation is working together with our networks to restore the six privileged provinces in the Andaman area. And later on, we're focusing on conservation of natural resources in Trang, Grabis, and Satu provinces. In the coastal area of Andaman Sea, we all understand that it has the, a very uh, uh, healthy ecosystem throughout the six provinces beaches. We have the mangrove forest, we have seagrass, we have beautiful coral reef, and it sustained the people in the area. And aside all those uh, fertile uh, factors in the six provinces, the, the length 2,000 kilometers, we have the uh, features, artisanal fisher and communities who rely on their livelihood and the coastal area since the olden day. And this group of people has been impacted by the degradations of natural resources, especially during the past 30 years. The amount of the aquatic animals decreasing from the fishing gear that destroying the baby fishes, especially the trolling net. And that's why they come together to find solutions, both at the location base and also make the policy recommendations. And this 
demonstrate the strength and the empowerment of the network in the six provinces to find solution on the degradation of natural resources. Furthermore, in the coastal area, there's different activities for conservation and restorations. Personally, I attended those activities together with the local community at Trang after tsunami since the year 2004. And the work, we would go on the ground and talk to the community directly, especially at Ban Nam Rap. At Trang province. This is another location that is a case study that I would like to be telling all of you about the lesson we learned in restoring the resources and that they now see the importance of a mangrove ecosystem and the benefits and services. They set up the group, they have the regulations and agreements, and they have the community mangrove forest committee in the community and they have the agreements within the group and they would be doing the management they would uh, differentiate different kind of mangrove area for conservations and the purpose of the community restoration is both for the utilizations and also as a buffer zone for the wave they see in the past that tsunami wave doesn't didn't play high impact on the community is because the maintenance of the mangrove forest and throughout the 10 years that they take, took good care of the mangrove forest, they would only use one for utilization. And this plot for utilizations of mangrove forest from the monitorings and survey, we don't need to change to other plot. And it is still fertile. The ecosystem is still in good conditions. So it reflects that the communities could manage and utilize from the natural resources in a sustainable manner as well. And also in the area, they specify the scope of maintenance of the seagrass and the coastal ecosystem. Namely, they send the, uh, the nursery zone for the four villages to conserve that. It has Ban Nam Rab and other three villages. So th there's a common rules on, ben on utilizing the resources. For the focus is on participation of all stakeholders. It took one year to set up this agreement, the common agreement, because each location used different fishing gear. So the focus is on prohibited illegal fishing gear and that it would destroy the baby aquatic animals and also not to use the one that would be harmful to dugong and the communities are aware of the resources and the work is through the consultation and dialogue because the Trang province we have the problem of degradations from the trawling net and that's why the villagers have to compete with each other. We No, not compete with each other. We have to fight with those um, illegal fishing gear ourselves. So we stopped those attempts of using the illegal fishing gear and restoring the mangrove forest conservation in a community way. And we do surveillance and setting up a group and to uh, stop the illegal locking for charcoal. Even after the concession, there's still illegal locking. So we do the monitoring and surveillance together with the government sectors. In this province, the government sectors also play a role and also support the coastal community for surveillance uh, and patrolling. And on the sea itself, in the case of illegal fishing gear, we would do the patrolling and issue warning, focusing on um, consultation and uh, behavior chain, modern arrest, and it enable to have more dugong in the Trang Sea and also the seagrass bed are um, more abundance now. 
So starting from four villages, we scaled it up to other villages in seven villages in Libong Island. So we have the declarations and regulations for the local government authorities for the conservation of seagrass and dugong. So each area would have their own common agreement on the usage of the resources in a sustainable way and also not to harm the baby aquatic animal and cons conserve the dugong and seagrass. And also there's a setup of the Fisher Association of Trang for artisanal fishery and they would have monthly meeting to consult and monitoring the situation to see what's the problems regarding the coastal natural resources because that's the developers since the year 2000, no, 1992 that had a developmental project. Do you know that the the first community, mangrove forest community is in Trang. We are, were the pilot um, group that enabled the participatory approach. And we focusing on awareness raising and educating the villages in the conservation measures. So for the 40 communities are setting up a network together and we developed the proposals that would have an impact on environment to the provincial level. Pro uh, Trang Province have a committee on the coastal and marine resources management. And at that time, it wasn't stated in the law. So we're the first province to have this. And we're the pilot area for the management in the way that the community also take part. And the dugong in Trang are really increasing. And also the seagrass coverage in Trang has a good tendency to increase as well during the conservation and patrolling period. In the case that the death of the dugong, the local villagers feel sad and very worried and they expedite the measures for solution. And this demonstrates the love that they have and the bond that they have with the resources. They do patrolling, surveillance, and continuously to prevent illegal um, fishing gears that would be harmful to the aquatic animals. And there's a proposal to announce as the provincial level that the prohibited the fishing gear that would be harmful to the dugong and seagrass. So now it's going to be announced and implemented very soon. And the area for seagrass in Trang would be for the breeding ground for the baby aquatic animals that the artisanal fishery can take place also for the ecosystem services are very valuable it's for the um, carbon sequestration the food sources tourism and the area for ban nam rap after this the conservations and restorations activities we would have the community's tourism as well before covid 19 we have tourism coming into Nam Rap area. And there's a, a floating trip and hiking. And we have received 10, more than 10,000 tourism and generate the income for the communities about three to five million baht per year. So just, we now have three or four more network grouping. So if you want to support, if you want to have eco-tourism, Ban Nam Rap is also a great choice for you. Delicious crab, because it's from the front yard. They have the blue crab bank. They have the learning centers for the youth and tourism to learn in the area. It's a job creation and distributing income for the local communities. So as for the threat in the area, uh, the most important thing is stemming from both the human activities and from the natural disasters. The first thing is climate change. It's becoming more extreme nowadays. The problem of coastal erosions are becoming more serious. The community at the coastal area, the house has to be moved uh, from, and some already collapsed. And the sea level rising make the, uh, the household need to be lifted up more than one meter. This is what we see. And the fissure as well, 
the artisanal fishers that have small fishing boat to go out at sea is quite a struggle because they can't expect what the wave would be like, not like in the past. Everything is erratic and getting more extreme and serious. And another problem is the wasted, uh, marine wasted. The, it's becoming very serious. In the year 2018, the mar plastic waste in the mar marine is number six in the countries. And from the research, the microplastic, now we found microplastic in the fish, in the um, animal that we eat, especially mackerel at the coastal area. We found um, contaminated microplastic in the mackerels. So we do the campaigning together with the communities and other agency to uh, extract the waste from the sea. And we worked together with IUCN last year to manage the marine litters at the Libong Island and it enables the community to become more aware and re re reduce the amount of plastic use and also to extract the marine litters back to the sea, back, back on land. So we can bring back the marine litters more than 10 tons last year. But the most important thing is that the community become very aware when they collect the waste and bring it back, even though it's not va very high in value. But I think that if they don't do that, the waste would be in the sea still. And in turn, it would be harmful to our own health and also destroy those rare uh, aquatic animals. And another threat is from development project in the coastal area that has an impact on the ecosystem of the seagrass in the Libong Island. We found that the largest seagrass bed more than 1, 000, no, 16,000 right has been damaged. 50% is in the pristine condition, but we have 1,800 um, uh, right that is dead seagrass and also lack the diversity about 1,250 right. So this is from the uh, Rajamong Konsi, which I, I um, college survey and from the study of the benefit on the economics of the seagrass ecosystem in Trang by the assistant doc, professor Dr. Arapan, we found that the ecosystem services of seagrass has the direct benefit from the fishing activity. It value more than 42 million baht per year and from tourism 192 million baht per year and the indirect benefit is for the sequestration and storage of CO2 198 million baht and for those that value does not from the utilization is more than 5300 million baht per year so if the we lose this ecosystem of the seagrass if it's been damaged what we lose is um, we can't really uh, cover it and also it's an area of the dugong which is a very endangered near extinct that the largest school is in Trang. another threat is also the law and the policy even though we try to improve the law that so that the community would take more um, engagement and participation but some of the law still has an impact on the ecosystem for the coastal community still for the um, the uh, bill on the uh, um, buildings that would be encroaching into the waterway, etc. And it impacts the indigenous people. The DNP Act, that the people cannot do fishing in, in other provinces or in the national park because the livelihood of artisanal fishers in the past, they could do the fishing in the different locations, but nowadays, is prohibited. It's a diminishing the rights of the artisan, artisanal features. It causes a conflict and dispute and arrest, and there's a loss of the income. And one of the policies is also the policy on the, um, land appropriation for the forest. So in Trang, uh, the leader for the conservation has been arrested, and about 22 had been land had been confiscated, and. The um, uh, fishers, local fishers would live along the coastline and they would 
live like from generation to generation without the land deeds. And in this area, those who've been erased, the uh, the uh, the land under the possession is small as well. So uh, for our discussion in the past, we request the government agency to please consider the and CPO policy to consider they are the indigent people so that it would be fair treatment for them and also to release a leader to come back and work on conservation measures. And a number of people are disappointed. But however, they believe that the resources belong to all of us and they still want to work on conservation still. And what we expect is that we would like all the stakeholders, all the agency involved to come together to take care of the coastal uh, ecosystem, both the mangrove and the seagrass, and to please do the maintenance and surveillance and patrol so that there would be no activity that would have an Im ne a negative impact on those ecosystems because it's so hard to restore. And mostly what we have lost, those resources could not be restored back in a in the short time. So the, the policy should focus on the community engagement, local participation, think about the people, that the people could coexist with the resources, and it, it would enable sustainability and maintain the ecosystem so that it would be good for everyone, reduce the climate change impact and natural disasters. So everything that would happen would change, would change for the better by our own hands. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kun Mani Wan San Lee from the Safe Andaman Sea Network. I think the most important point that you have stressed is the dimension of conservation. Because apart from the revival and restoration, you can see the development of conservation. There are new threats that have changed in its form. The idea of blue carbon. I think you have to look at investment for conservation to support the community so that they have continual role in the stewardship of the mangrove, whether um, for uh, looking after the, uh, the uh, mangrove area, surveillance. And you can see you know, new threats like microplastic that comes back, the management of waste, uh, systematically in the area, and also how to improve the local living. In order to ensure success, um, there is a promotion of tourism as well. So how do you promote it systematically and does not cause an impact? So these are continual investment, but I think it's sustainable if you do bring in monitoring and, survey, uh, and evaluation for carbon it will assist in strengthening the community. The last um, speaker for today has a long experience in the revival of the forest uh, in, as a community forest. So they will talk about community participation and economic benefits from mangroves, the case of Ban Pret Nai community in Trat, Kun Rawi Thawan from Rikov C. Please. Right, hell, hello, I'm Ravi Thawan. Um, I'm uh, uh, one of the researchers and developers of Recoff. So I'd like to thank IC, um, UCN. Um, the Department of Marine Coastal Resources and Dow Company for the exchange. We have learned quite a lot, and, you know, uh, from the large landscapes down to the point. But my case, uh, maybe is a, that I will talk about, well, is a small one where we have um, started work. I'm going to use a few slides. Please, can you turn on the slides? There you go. Right, the area that I will take all of you is a 
เปิดในบ้านเปิดในคอมมูนิตี้อินตราวิฟเวิร์กด์ฟอร์เดอร์ฟอร์ลองไทม์วิดเดอะคอมมูนิตี้เซลฟ์ right the issues that I will explain is uh, there are four points the first one I'm going to tell you the development of the protection and the restoration of the forest. Secondly, is how you restore the mangrove forest from the abandoned uh, shrimp farms. We use science. Uh, we use participation and benefits. And the fourth, uh, our lesson learned and success factors. b a n p e t n a i community is set at m o o d To Huang Nam Khao Subdistrict in t r a t it's quite large. Um, it's right in the bay. There's about 10,000 r i g h t with 12 canals. They have uh, revived, uh, restored this area since um, 2000, 1997. Uh, sorry, 1987, and there are uh, quite a number of house households who have rubber and. Uh, oil palm. They also have aquaculture, which is like natural fish farms and natural shrimp farms from about 3,000 r i g h t And several are working. It's catching the crabs, the mangrove crabs, the fish. Uh, some who do not get catch enough. Uh, they also some of them have other vocations. That we have five. 35 years of the protection and revival. The first part uh, is 1983 to um, 1987. It's a protection area. There was some investors and also the local villagers who actually cooperate with them in cutting down the forest and creating trim farms. This affected the people in the community. They all resisted. Um, uh, in the beginning, they uh, set up bunkers to fight with the investors. And around um, 1986, we had um, external agencies to come and assist us. Those are the protection days. In the second period, it's 1987. To 1997, it's 10 years of revival. Uh, they're using. They didn't plan anything, but they are protecting the area so that the nature would recover itself. The third phase is um, 1998 to uh, 2004. Uh, Rikoff actually came in to assist them by growing the community forest. Uh, it is under the funding of Toyota Foundation and other partners. We would sincerely thank uh, all of the foundation, the Toyota Foundation, and other partners who have assisted us. We set up the team in um, 2000 and, uh, 1998, and we use, you know, this concept. Of our p a r t i n g from revival, it's a management of the uh, fisheries in the area. The idea is that to stop catching the things that are worth a hundred, and you wait until you can catch those that can give you income of millions. So, you know, we have made agreement during the breeding period. In, and the areas that we close off in certain areas, where we change the trim films, uh, I'm sorry, the the trim farms uh, near um, Canal Seven and Eight, and we regrow the forest in that zone to mitigate uh, the problems from encroachment. We made an agreement with nearby neighborhoods um, look to protect uh, the area from erosion. During uh, 2000 to 2002, we do uh, um, black crab bank and also a fish bank. Um, this strategy of not catching 100 but waiting for the million to come, these are the areas in which we uh, use in all the areas. 
you know, some species come back like the crab and also the razor clams. So th they come back once we started protection. They were so uh, proud in having such bio biodiversity. You know, the stalk comes back and the red stalk as well as some of the ducks, they come back. Um, and they are looking, we are looking at the, at the species level. These are the revival of the, and restoration. This is when we were funded by Toyota. The governor came in to help. Uh, uh, this is, we can, I'm sorry, we cannot hear what he's saying. Um, I think the micro there's something wrong with the microphone. So you can hear very faintly. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, it's back. Okay, we monitor the erosion of the surface of the sea. We now know that uh, there is more, is it more violent? And we need to uh, take care of that. As mentioned, we revive both the area and the ecosystem. And we also look at this, each of the species. And you can see the economic revenue. This is uh, an incentive for the revenue that we, it actually will feed people from 2000 and uh, 1997 onwards, then you get a lot of income. Now, where does income come from? The crab collectors um, are landless. 70% of them do not have any land. There are small um, groups. You can see that the amount of revenue actually spreads out. These numbers show that the forest, the protection of forests, assist in the livelihood of these people. The crab collectors are still working. They became forest watchers. When they catch the crab and when they saw threats, they will come and talk to the community forest um, um, people. That has actually helped us a lot. We also work with IUCN uh, in 2011 to 2013, we used um, the area of to expand um, the protection for erosion, and we expand to a network of six sub-districts. We set up a learning center. We bring in lesson learned, and then we taught them to six sub-districts. The villagers started doing their own you know, research on new knowledge, uh, if it's from bare land, then they start looking uh, how to uh, revive the the land and uh, restore the land. These uh, knowledge then are pulled together, and we also we set up a guidebook to do a survey, evaluation, and follow up. These are all um, guidelines to improve and restore the community forest. This is the time when the mangrove forest future um, organization came in to help. And after uh, all the villagers have been working together, they received a global prize. They were so proud. It, uh, it was the future prize. They received the Equator Prize from UNDP. It says local action. This is one case study within the uh, decade that the Equator Prize has been trying to comply the best practice uh, in each area. And the Brett Nye community has received this prize. It was uh, now also for the community fund. They did not wait for money from outside. Since 2008, they put in, they pool the resources, which is money together, from the activity for raising the crab and also for looking after the forest. Um, they collected uh, 104,000 baht and recoffed added 70,000 baht to it. 
uh, that are in 2011, uh, they used this fund to buy the abandoned shrimp farm. They paid uh, 180,000 baht and used that as an additional area to grow mangrove forests. In 2013, they received a lot more, uh, which is revenue from the, uh, the um, farming in the area in 340,467 baht. And the uh, funds is set up in order to look after the mangrove forest. Some of the people became um, the uh, look after the people who are monitoring or patrolling the, the forest, they sometimes would pay for oil, uh, gas for these people who are looking after the forest and also development of the personnel. They try to bring in the newer generations to look after the forest and exchange ideas. I believe this is one dimension for sustainability. You can see that uh, this is the 25 ride they bought from the money from the fund. It comes from the, their own vision. They, it used to be an aquaculture area, but it's right next to the mangrove forest. So that's why they bought it. And then this 45 ride, what did they do? We, they wanted to know how to revive this former trim farm into a, a full mangrove forest. So they use research uh, guidelines, um, what we call citizen science, that uh, we have prepared uh, for quite a few years ago. We bought the farm using the funds from the community. We design how we want to restore the area. And then together, uh, they would, the community would participate. They, this morning, they used the, uh, the academics used the word soul nation. Okay, but the villager says, before we do any restoration, we have to know the layers, the surface layers, and the soil, the forest layers. We have to know the type of soil, if it's hard soil or soft soil or clay, and the management of the water in the area. These are the body of knowledge that is actually in alignment with the academics, but it's their own style of categorizing. Now, the growing of the uh, plants, they will collect um, the seeds, and then the, the seeds then will be planted. They are not going to take seedlings and then plant it because there is cost. They are just following a natural process where seeds will be scattered, and then uh, it will grow. And then after that, they will follow up. Uh, we had a, a marine scientist. Kun uh, has come in to design this, and the new generation then looks at the uh, new seedlings um, to help. So you have research, collection of an operation. We have like the older generation and the younger generation uh, starting to collect data together, measurement of the trees, the height, collection of the uh, the counting of the leaves. Also, they also collect uh, information about surface uh, water animals. Bentos. The Bentos. Bentos. Uh, whether it's a fish, whether it's a crab, uh, the mantis shrimp. Okay, so once this is like grown from seeds that were scattered and the areas that were open, if there's any trees, they will leave it in there. Uh, they will use the small leaf, because formerly it was this small leaf um, rhizome, rhy rhizomes. <laughs> and so this is the third year, rhizophora. <laughs> So the findings is that there are a lot of changes and benefits from the revival of this mangrove in the 45 ride. 80% of the um, mangroves survive. There are more than 10 surface animals. 
and at least 25 aquatic animals uh, came back. Five is an economic animal. Um, so they said, we asked them how much revenue they gained from this. At least uh, 10, 15,000 baht uh, per month uh, from collection of the crab. So uh, from purchasing this land of 180,000 baht using the community's money, they were able to gain income. They are looking after the forest. Um, and also from knowledge, they gain knowledge from looking after this area, the restoration from bare land to a mangrove forest. Uh, they know uh, they have a local course and they can expand this or this can be taken uh, over and done in other areas. They have guidelines and manuals. We, they learn, they also learn about climate change in the meanwhile. So they, we have not talked about uh, buying or selling carbon credit. We told them that, you know, they are small people, but they can help uh, reduce the release of um, carbon, uh, emission of carbon, and uh, as you mentioned. At present, they took a picture, I did not go back. Uh, it's been 11 years now, and the 45 rye is totally restored. Uh, the height is about 7 to 10 meters high, and uh, for the bamboo is about 35 to 55 centimeters. And this is some absolute bare land. At present, it's an area for the collection of aquatic animals. Um, for those who do not have land, um, or those who are traditional fishers. In summary, the local community from the 35 years of restorative practice, um, they have 11 years of uh, experience of reviving of the trim farm into mangrove forest. And these are, have become the main source of income for the villagers. It also became um, a center for study, for study visits, ecotourism, which also increased the amount of uh, revenue of the villagers. It is a nursing a nursery for um, small animals, for uh, the baby animals that are bred in the area. This will support um, the the uh, areas and also new species can be found in the 3,600 rye that has become the mangrove forest. And finally, this is to mitigate um, disasters. Some are making fruit farms, so the mangrove also reduces the, uh, the strength of the wind. These are all three uh, ambassadors, Norway, Sweden, and Switzerland, who came to visit the area. And so the villagers felt that they, the EU uh, was interested in them. Um, these are the zones of um, uh, mangrove growth that we did not plant. They became a community-based mangrove restoration, conservation, and management in Bretnoy, Thailand. They became a case study for other areas. You can click in and read about the case study. And so it is an international, it has become, uh, it has fallen into international limelight. The important lessons learned is that you have to use a landscape approach. You look at the area when there's full water and the water receding right up to the mangrove grove. There are zonations in the mangrove, the one at the front of the sea. They look at the total. They did not have to separate into zones, but when you re restore the forest, it's not just uh, focusing on the carbon, they're looking at the biodiversity as well. This is the direct benefits. Addis is from the actual the aquatic animals that come in and live. Those who benefit from the forest, the poor people, 
then they are uh, they have uh, um, a decision in participation uh, how they use only scientific knowledge and local knowledge say uh, the proposal of stop catching 100 and waiting for the million is actually comes from a villager it is a very simple um, uh, cause and effect uh, and also incentive for the people to come and join and they feel that uh, biodiversity must be linked to the bigger picture with their mouth they uh, with economy and their livelihood they try to pass this on to the new generation if they're interested in the science in digital still everything has to link back to uh, feeding um, however finally they have to require support from outside and uh, promoting the area especially knowledge from the university as also as uh, the local wisdom from the scholars I think I would like to end my presentation here. Uh, this is uh, three decades of studies. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Hukun Mac, and really extensive experience. You summarize everything. I don't need to do so any longer. So the summaries of the lesson learned. This is a really interesting case studies because we're not talking about the potentials of the blue carbon. But when we look back, we see that there's an excellent example of the success story on the community management and also for Brett Nai. Overcome it from the using the funding of the communities to buy the land, to buy the land that's been encroached and then to restore it back. I would like to invite all the four speakers up to the stage, please. We would like to ask about just 15 to 20 minutes for the recap. So I would like to invite uh, also Kun Siripon from Renong as well. I have to say that this is the inspirational story because the examples are from the four speakers is really for the management on the ground for the blue carbon, both for the mangrove forest, seagrass, and the example of natural resources management that is uh, successful and learning from the uh, degradations uh, failure in the uh, in the first from the um, Mr. Kayai and then the community realized that the degradations have an impact on themselves and they come together and make an effort to do the conservations and also restorations. Some might start from the trial and error, starting to learn about it step by step, and then they get uh, with the ecosystem back. The important questions and to the point is that I am very interested. There's a lot of interest about blue carbon that we have to conserve and restore. And uh, there's a new opportunity for the business as well, that we would be able to do the do carbon tr credit trading from the blue carbon. So if we able to propose from the one who have the direct experience for the protections, conservations of the blue carbon for the 20 to 30 years, what would you like to propose as an approach or the directions for the private sectors that are really keen to support your blue carbon's work? So the mayors, do you have any suggestions? Or what would you like to see as a support from the private sector? Is there any specific thing you would like to request? Thank you so much to the moderators. For the reforestation, I'm not thinking about carbon at all. I'm just doing it by relying that I am the native there when I was young. 
I realized that if the forest is healthy, we will get a lot of fish sources and then, uh, um, aquatic animals. So I grow the forest. We grow the forest for the community to harvest. Well, after the forest become mature, we would receive the benefit of the aquatic animals for to feed us, to feed the community. And afterward, if there's a surplus, we sell. So there's a Dow company that ignited me on tourism and the local community as well uh, gain the benefits from the forest management and Dow company also fill in the gap to do the photography competition so that people would just flock to the area and support also the learning centers. Therefore, um, people come and learn about the ecosystem of the mangrove forest at Park Nam Prasad with us. And it generates revenue for our local community. Just as I said earlier, the, when the um, husband do the fishing and then come back, the wife sell the surplus fishes, and the peop tourism on the boat would have a look at the tourism, at the tourism site. And after the housewife would use a tree villa to carry the um, tourists, and they earn money as well. Now, Prasaya people do not need to ride the um, motorcycle for multiple kilometers to work in a the factory. They can work and earn their income in the hometown. That's really additional income. I really want to sincerely thank Dow Company. We, if Dow want to do carbon credit or anything, I would talk to them. I have no knowledge about this. But what I know is that mangrove forest and rhizophora and the ecosystem as a whole, it's excellent. It provides excellent services, especially the monsoon season. If it's raining, the nutrient from land is flowing down from with the with the creek, and then it when it encountered the root of the mangrove forest, it stayed there. So it's created a breeding ground for the aquatic animals. It become a food and fathers for the aquatic animal. And the leaf is thick. It, the, the leaf of the mangrove is thick. It would release the oxygen for us to breathe, like nine tons per year. This is just what I learned. It's like a by, by benefits, you know, like a side benefit. So if it's for conservation, restoration, and maintenance, especially for carbon credit, that would be best. That is just a policy that I have. So it's clear that your livelihood is better. So if there's other community, do you have a lot of case, uh, uh, study visit? Yes, a lot. I have a lot of study visit from other municipalities, other um, districts, like trees group a day. And at our Bak Nam Prasad municipalities, we always stress that you need to come together to do reforestations. If not enough this year, that the sea level will rise, then you have to do it next year. But you need to do it. You have to, uh, to, to do it according to the DMCR. You have to. You no, know, no, and also generate the uh, other mode of uh, tourism income as well. So this is a success factor. You get a constant support as well as a Dow company. You get Dow company and other knowledge from other sources. You are fortunate as well that you are near the research center as well, right? From the DMCR. That's true. So it's a collaboration in a concrete way. Kun Vivi, could you be a representative of Renong, please? Can you come up here so that we have full representations? Because we're working together very closely. Thank you so much to the mayor. And I would like to move to the Andaman Foundations. So for Trang province, if we talk about blue carbon, especially seagrass, that's the main focus now. Trang, we have to say that it's a hot spot of the hot spot. So if in Thailand we have biodiversity, Trang is 
on the, the cream de la cream for the biodiversity. And the most important in indicator is dugong. And I believe that is a coexistent symbiosis, not just dugong depending on seagrass, because a piece of, of research specified that dugong also is a gardener of the oceans. It's help enable the, the uh, germinations of the seed or the seagrass that the dugong has been eaten. It has a better growth rate. And also the largest school of dugong is the best indicator that the seagrass bed are really healthy and in a good conditions. And there's now the speaker already told us on the innovation on conservation effort and the research on participations and action research at Drang must be one of the first ones since the Yat Fon Foundation that led the um, community to uh, do the research in the seagrass bay to see the living organism. And they see that it is a supermarket of the, of the sea. And now it's a protected area. And we need to thank the communities that uh, push forward for this. Is, and also there's a management of the zoning for commercial fishing so that the coastal area of Trang has been announced by the MCR as a marine protected area. And the directions for conservation after this, what would you suggest, especially now that the private sector is showing interest in supporting for blue carbon? What do you look, or what do you see in this instance? So for Trump, for the climate change, um, in the area we work together with the community for quite a while. We raise awareness for them so that they would be able to observe and take stock um, of the surrounding area and the occupation that's been impacted by climate change. Most importantly, that the resources base that we have in the area, both for the mangrove and seagrass ecosystem, what we've been doing is to uh, conserve and make the mutual agreement and do the zoning for the seagrass, for the dugong, and also have the survey and patrolling system. And the monitoring of the project, that would have an impact as well. These are extremely important because it would be damaging to the seagrass. Because of fishing gear, the people are already take taking care of that for the uh, trawling net. And nowadays, we have limited the scope for the fishing. And we discuss with the commercial fishing and make an understanding. And for the dugong, the focus is that they will have to live together. And if there's a dugong, there would be seagrass. And then they would have a job. They would have food. And they need to coexist together, cannot be a an enemy and the dugong need to be increased and uh, fishing gear that would be harmful to the dugong becoming less but then that would need to be monitored because it still exists so everything would be possible and now that we would have a private sector is paying attention to blue carbon this is something new that the community are still not understanding about it so important point that we would like everyone to be aware of is that to get the community to be involved. And what we are doing now and doing with the community right at the moment is for conservation. It could continue. And if we get support from other sources, in which way, and it needs to be something that we have to deliberate together, find direction together. And now the threat still exists. It's always a new threat coming into play. So we always have to keep our eyes on, for example, the water transport that have to transport different minerals and there's a pier that need to be dredged. And the area that for the dredging, now we have the committees to oversee it. So if there's a next attempt, we have to do the survey and the impact study so that it would not be impacting the ecosystem. Because when there's a damage, to restore it to the pristine condition is very difficult. It, um, it might never be possible, especially for dugong. If there's no habitat, no food, it migrates somewhere else and they might die. I believe that everything is at the ready. We are ready to, be, to make it into abundancy again. So we need to find a way to maintain what we have now and increase it. 
maybe increase the size to do it. And for mangrove forest, we have the community management from the mangrove forest, and we do it mangrove for the futures in the number of area. And we are successful at a certain level. The community have the rules together, but when the law change, the enforcement of our different officers are also not the same. And we have the Community Forest Act. I would like to encourage the agency involved to support the people who's working in this field to be able to manage it. Just like at Ban Nam Rap, they have community forest management. But but later on, the the officers stick up a, a, a announcement that it is a reserve area, and we would like to receive more support and more involvement. I believe that the people on the ground they are part of the ecosystem as well. You can't separate them from the ecosystem. You can't just separate natural resource and the people. And also the manpower from the government sectors are limited. So to do the activity or restoration effort, we, it's better to have the main support from the community participation. Definitely. Um, it is an area that has conservation and management all the time. So actually, for blue carbon should not be limited to uh, conservation, to restoration, because a lot of the resources requires a good governance and management in order to preserve the area uh, and protect it from change all the time. So in order to, if you uh, put the focus on conservation, uh, looking after the governance, that is equally as important. Uh, new research as well, because it can, um, you know, the protected zone in the sea, apart from looking at biodiversity, they also are looking at the connections uh, where the life cycle are for the aquatic animals. We, whether they live in the mangroves, the coral area. Actually, these are adjacent areas where the aquatic animals travel. So you have to look at it as an overall system, and you have to look at it as a management. I would like to add a little bit more. We have some academics who come in and help the um, university um, nearby. So. This, we might raise the, the awareness as well as the level activity to be more systematic so that the people in the community would understand about blue carbon and uh, understanding more about the ecosystem. I think we can see a, a direction in uh, providing academic support because there are several uh, agencies and universities supporting Trang because Trang is a pro now a protected area, more than 800,000 Rai involved. So n only the officers um, cannot look after that. Let's move on to Rikov. You know, you have actually summarized all your lesson learned, which is really interesting. Uh, using even the local wisdom to communicate uh, and make it easier to understand. Uh, stop buying hundreds, uh, but waiting to catch a million. You know, something that uh, is not scholarly, but it's something that you can understand very simply, right? You s wait until they have fish, the fish is grown, um, or even the little ideas about how you collect, uh, you know, you, uh, you must not catch um, the fish that has um, eggs in them, and how, uh, now, what do you see, you know, about blue carbon and the various f companies that come in to work with the community, is it possible for the companies? Yes, we set up a um, stage for discussion between the villagers and the companies 
actually the villagers feel that they don't have a body of knowledge that is systematic. The what are the roles about for carbon sequestration for their own forest that they have restored? That is the point. They feel that if there's an offset, um, then what are the real impacts to them? Um, so this is something that the academics people would have to give knowledge uh, as well as the regulations, right? 90 to 10, that is a ratio of carbon credit. Uh, now, if the developer receives 90, uh, and then they would only get 10. But if the person, if they, all, they do the village, uh, if it belongs to the villagers, they would get all 100, right? So uh, this area used to be bare land. So in turning this over to the investor, uh, would that be fair? So you have to really consider that. It's uh, creating awareness for climate change, for blue carbon. And in the future, you might have to look at biodiversity credit that is beyond carbon, right? Because the mangrove itself has a uh, other potentials. So for value that is other than carbon, there should be uh, deeper research. You know, carbon is just simply part of the ecosystem service. But there are other uh, services that we have to really consider. If the private sector feels that, OK, carbon then responds to your marketing needs or your company needs, but you know the adaptation of the people and adaptation of the aqua animal is part of the biodiversity. So I think if you add value to this, it will be very good. And you need to bring in the new generation because there are technology, right? The new generation knows the technology. And then maybe if you bring them in, then they can exchange, uh, they can disseminate knowledge or communicate it much easier for the uh, people so that everyone knows that they are protecting the forest, they are protecting the carbon, and make the people in society understand more, and the society then would support them more. Uh, this is something that you can raise the level of awareness and support and uh, participation. Actually, the examples of the community buying the land and then reviving it themselves, you know, it is very clear. This is the part of the extension of the management of land with the main objective for conservation for biodiversity. This can certainly respond to ODCM, right? The areas where it is fully managed. And it will also be in line with the national policy, right? Where there must be around 30% of national protected area. Couldn't we, you know, uh, something that I have, I'm able to um, summarize from all four cases is the mentorship. And you can see in Rayong Kayai, uh, Kun Kayai, who is actually a civil servant, but he has a vision and he's working with so many people with Mangrove for the Future. The Mangrove for the Future actually provide advice, Prasaya has and uh, safe Andaman, they look after each of the community to do action research. How do you see this as a role of the people where there must be um, support for capacity building for the community? Actually, for mentorship, uh, I talked to Mama. You know, it's like you know boxing. You need a mentor. You need a coach. Maybe in the beginning, for the first three years, you have to be closer. But when he's strong, he can box. You know, you look at him from a distance because the community has a wave. Because there might uh, be conflict, the mentor, might, the coach might have to come in and help. As Kun Kayai has mentioned, there must be a mediator, whether it's NGO or private um, partner because then they can link the community to the public. For NGOs, 
one important point is that conservation is not volunteering money or funding for growing the trees. Yes, that's part. But uh, could we ask for funding for monitoring and evaluation as well? Because, you know, you throw in an amount and you give it to the community. That That is not enough. You need uh, to build, you know, uh, awareness for monitoring and um, follow up as well. And also another point is that when uh, you have the partnership for the Mangrove Alliance, we want to expand it to the 23 coastal areas as well. We want to have several of the um, uh, a society when they're working in Pedbury. And there are cases um, of the private partners. Ajahn Anchana has also mentioned that we should have a demonstration plot. Demonstration plot for mangroves, bangjak area. Uh, what about the carbon sequestration? You know, the academics for seagrass or seaweed, they should work together for the whole ecosystem. Can we ask for this? area of those people who are listening let's work together let's point if you want if you're ready you can act as a coach those who are ready to be a sponsor you know it's like you are going to go on a fight what role are you going to play in the ecosystem so if we could link together we can create uh, a force now in terms of climate change many people start to be aware but the biodiversity is is also another issue. Several unions in several countries may feel that in six or seven years, they must have a conservation area of 30%, both on land and in the sea. The money or the funding that you have now is not even enough to look at the conservation area that you have, not to speak about the 30%. So system is quite important. It's not just like carbon only, but it's the land and the air that we breathe as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to ask if anyone have any questions, uh, the people who are also online with us. Thank you, thank you very much, all the speakers. Since morning today, we've been talking about several issues, and we've been trying to link, you know, from foreign um, vision to Thai policy, and then coming down to the local area. And um, since morning, you've seen that when we try to revive or restore or conserve, there are many issues that you have to uh, take care of. You know, you have already mentioned biodiversity, survival rate, type of species, revenue of the community, community participation, so many elements. So when the player is going to uh, go on the field in every country, how do you link policy to actual implementation so that it comes back into the same way? Say, if I undertake it in Andaman, I have one um, indicator, and I go to the other area, and there are three or four indicators. So I would like to say, when we go to different areas, uh, in trying to aim for the same target, what should we do? Is there anyone who wants to answer? I would like to propose. I would like, I think that one thing that would be beneficial would be like a policy proposal, because we can see quite a big gap uh, between scientific knowledge and the direction that the private companies are heading. So maybe a policy recommendation to frame the blue carbon as one of the nature-based solution. Kun Anchana has been trying to explain so that we don't, we are not misguided. It's not simply just blue carbon. 
but we should try and look at a way out or solution or native-based solution. Are you see, and it's in a good position to pro propose a policy recommendation, but there might be needs to be a platform in which you would collect all the various points. But this platform has several proposed so points, so we might need to discuss this at the uh, rec at the uh, recommendation levels. Do you have any uh, answers to Kunjoy's question? Actually, um, from working with um, Department of Marine and Coastal Resource, we have to think about policy. Actually, we opened a platform of um, the forest community that is digital, safe portal. If we can link these portals together and ensure that uh, everyone knows what's happening, say Mapa Luang is doing this, Mefa Luang is doing this, because they are doing draft zero carbon. And I agree with uh, Kun Pet, IUCN, and uh, um, the MCR might assist but also the coach or you know the mentors who've been working they should jump in as well not only just IUCN and um, the MCR good boy a question The issue that I'm concerned with is just what you said. When talking with the MCR, what I'm most worried about is that the government cannot keep up, cannot keep up with many different things. It's a thing in silo. And so when we talk about blue carbon, the MCR, which is focusing on the reforestation. Well, today we talk about biodiversity, about the common agreements and the rules and regulations of the MCR. It's only talking about forestation. Would a, a government think about the biodiversity? Yes, just like in ONEP. But a government working in silos, so in separation, each of them think of different projects. So the important point is that you have to add the knowledge from the academic side. The Dutch and Chana talk about academics. A lot of people talk about that. How do we add that in? Don't just believe that the MCR, the only one who knows best about the marine and the mangrove forest. I've been in the MCR for a long time. I, I can say with confidence that the academic have to take part. We have to stimulate the thought. So this is a key message I want to say. We need to act as a stimulator. So I would like to live it with the uh, Marine Science Association as well as a representative. Okay, Kun Boy, can I leave it with the presidents of the association as well? I believe this is important issues, and a number of speakers are really trying to reiterate. Just as I said, if you ask me to look at this, the ecosystem management hierarchy, we have to see which is the most effective method with the highest possibilities of success and the low investment. So that is the maintenance and conservation. It always been overlooked in the past, and the communities who are working on it I need to struggle by themselves for the pre prevention of protections, but for the restoration, just that uh, uh, the um, head Kayai said that we lack the space for planting any longer. We don't have any more spot for planting. So we need to talk about fact, put the fact on the table with the support from the academics, information and technical papers. Blue carbon is a language that could be communicated with the business sector very well. They see the opportunity immediately on the spot. So we have to look back that it's uh, opportunities for the countries as a whole to elevate the management of the con and the conservation system. So we need to uh, rely on the um, the academics paper and the, um, the research as well to guide us. But yes, the opportunity is here. It depends on the how do we set up, how do we set up the mechanisms for that. We have a lot of uh, experience and lessons on all the forums. We see a lot of local success and there's a lesson learned 
that's the identifications of the success factor, the leaderships, continuities, determinations, participations, and the knowledge from the outside, the consultancy, mentoring. We always see this. So how do we elevate this, mainstream this together? So the people in the area, they know about the success factors, but they are aware of the obstacle as well. The, the struggle to mobilize the work in the areas to exist. And uh, there's also the limitation on the budgeting or financial support. So this is a challenge that now we have great opportunity to connect with the market in the domestically and internationally for the credit, uh, carbon credits, but we need to set our ship on the right directions. Any other exchange? Professor Anchana, any summaries? I would like to thank. Yes, the intention is that we have all the sectors here, but the, the key point is that how do we put the pieces of the puzzle together? This is the opportunity for Thailand to elevate NBS, and we have the, all the stakeholders playing the roles. I don't know who I would leave it with, but for me as an academic, I am more than happy to support and and also to take up the, the roles of Thailand to understand about blue carbon. So this is all I would like to say thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comment? Yes, please. from the Global Compact Network. We are representative of the business sectors. I would like to take up from what you said. There's, I would like to support you. We have time, we have resources, we have human resources, and we have financial support. We would utilize that resources for the activity together, and mostly for CSR. But from now on, we would not just do CSR any longer. Continuity is what we need to focus on. We just don't want to do CSR anymore. And we would like to thank all the good, excellent example from Dow Chemicals and all the network. We see the potentials of working without stopping, working for 15 years without stopping. And some projects might even last longer. And Global Compacts are organizing. The one that I would like to, you know, get the button from you, to pass on the button from you. Like we want the business sector to understand correctly. There's a lesson learned from all of you. Um, we know why it's a failure. I planned uh, the three, four, t 10, 20 times, but then it didn't survive. We need to improve it. And as the professor said that, to generate knowledge, we need to rely on the academy and we need to discuss. And nature has to be nature, not just do it by the book. It's nature-based solution that we're looking for. So Global Compact would like to come back here again. Uh, we, we're not sure yet how to make the connectivities, but today I want to say that, we, yes, I want to find a way forward. We want to make the next step. How do we elevate it so that the business sectors can make it into the business planning? I use and have the framework for the guideline for corporate performance on the measurements of the impact. I talked to a number of business that you plant this many rye of forest, when, how do you count it that it would be the output? We don't want to, of course, get the money to our pocket. No, we don't want that. We invest for 10 to 20 years. We want it to be the value for the society. And the nature-based solutions have the way to me measure that and the side-based target that you use as a carbon credit. We don't want to do the duplications. What I see is that there is TC, FD, TNFD, and we want the sustainability report of the business sectors would be in a scientific basis. And we put the value of the true outcome for the species and flora and fauna in the business term so that they could declare outright that what they do is not just carbon credit, but is to restore the business together with the natural resources. And at the end, we believe that the business have to rely on the natural resources because it's the raw materials for them. And so the way forward that I would propose is that within next month in October, we would like to bring the business sector to talk to you. 
this is just the right action plan here in the air together. And we expect that if you have the network like IUCN or someone who worked with business sectors previously, use the language, that uh, the terminology that they understand, fine tune together. I think it would be quick and prompt. And that would be the next forum that we can work together. Thank you very much. I would like to PR for the next event as well, right? Is that for the next event? It is our honor. I would also do help with the bridging. We do have a lot of uh, researchers who are interested in this. We see the opportunities. But now we need to create the right narrative. If it's wrong, it's very hard to solve. So for blue carbon as well, we need to create the right narrative so that it would create investment. But it has to be the right investment as well. And I believe that from the experience, and we have uh, a really good opportunity for the step forward. But for translations of the academy term to the business uh, term, this is also one of the challenge. But we have a way to to smooth it out. And for blue carbon and carbon credit is an example that we see. Biodiversity credit is another concept that is now trying to come up with the methods. And now it's an example and a good, great auspicious occasions for the stakeholder to understand about blue carbon and to open up the dimensions on the work in the futures. That if you want to move forward, That's a bit of a concern from the academy side that the rules, regulations, the methodologies that have been announced might not be in accordance to the concept that we plan. And so we need to come together to consult with each other, look forward together to maximize the blue carbon that is now a global agenda. And Thailand, in the strategic uh, locations, to enable sustainable development by relying on the NBS. So I would like to thank all the speakers on the stage for the exchange. And today is really extremely fruitful um, uh, conference and to scale it up and to understand the opportunity for Blue Carbon together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kun uh, Parath, Kun Maniwan, Dr. Mani, Dr. Pet as well for your um, ideas. The, all the success would come from cooperation from both private 